Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Supernatural Substation, your last stop before the unknown. I'm your host, Eileen Pastanio, and my co-host, Bernadine Richardson, will be joining me shortly with tonight's guest, Joe Montaldo. Joe is the founder, national director, and spokesperson for ICAR, the International Community for Alien Research, that now has members across 11 countries worldwide. A former investigator for MUFON, Joe is an expert in the subject of UFOs, alien abductions, star children, indigo children, my labs, or military abductions, and government involvement in the UFO phenomenon. Joe is committed to transparency in UFO and alien research, and in an effort to increase public awareness of what he believes is the reality of alien contact, Joe founded the Paranormal Radio Network and the United Public Radio Network where, by the way, this little show got its start. As the host of multiple shows, Joe has interviewed most of ufologies, top researchers, and personalities. Joe has appeared on several major TV shows, including Ancient Aliens, and a host of other shows across networks such as Discovery, The History Channel, The Travel Channel, and many more. Joe remains dedicated to the cause of sharing information about UFOs and related phenomena with the public. He believes, quote, the public need to understand what is going on with alien contact and exactly what the alien agenda is, unquote. Joe is also a dear friend of ours, and we're excited to have him on our show. So don't go anywhere. Bernadine and Joe are waiting to join me in the substation right after this quick break. What's the latest with UFOs, Joe? I know that's your thing, and uh, you're an expert in it, so I haven't been keeping up with UFOs. I don't think Dean has either. So what's, what's going on in the world of UFOs? Uh, always, there's always some BS going on. It, um, you know, <laughs> with, the, with, the, well, with the government, this was so funny. When the government came out, I was thinking, you know, I've, 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 I've talked to different people in government for many, many, many years. And we ended up giving, what, three and a half days of testimony, the polygraph to them. So it's, um, the thing of it is, like, when Koresh came out and talked about all this, I'm thinking, dude, you are so full of, you know what. And I couldn't sit there and listen. I'm thinking Congress cannot be buying this. This is the most biggest load of, you know, what I've ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. The more he talked about it, the more you could tell. And then finally at the end, he says, well, this is all secondhand knowledge. I haven't seen any of this myself. Well, get your ass down off the witness stand. I don't care about you. Go, go, go over there and give, you know, Dr. Greer a kiss and, and move on with yourself. Mm-hmm. We need, we need eyewitnesses or people who have firsthand knowledge, not people who are being told by somebody. And this guy was a spy. That's what he did for a living. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he was definitely being up there handing out disinformation is what he was doing. Now, the three pilots, there was three Navy pilots, and um, they were up there giving testimony. You could tell they were being completely sincere. The yeah. Guy, the, well, the first guy said, oh, they just, they come from another dimension. Sometimes they just fall out the sky and crash. And I'm like, really? And, uh, and I'm thinking, how many have crashed? And he said, well, we got at least 70 came through and crashed, and we got all these bodies. I'm like, wow. And I said, that's a worse flight record than the, F- the FCC. And and we would quit flying after just four or five of them. We wouldn't send any more through. Right. Yet the pilot said, oh, no, these things are, are beastified. They do loop-de-loops around you. They sit in front of you and then disappear and come back. Uh, just to wake alone sometimes will flip my planes over. It's, we talked about this. And then he said, you knew they were playing with you because they would be on radar. And then they wouldn't be. He said, so we didn't know if there was a way they just mess with our radar or if they was just moving so fast that our radar couldn't keep up. Just weren't sure. But regardless, they would lose them on radar. 
Wow. So, you know, and, and they said the capabilities of, of these things were far beyond any that anybody currently has on this planet by leaps and bounds. That's how they said it. Not by just a little bit, by by a large amount. So these are definitely craft. And the pilots had no problem saying these were probably a, of extraterrestrial origin. They just didn't know what they were doing because they seemed to have been playing with them. They didn't, uh -huh. you know, they weren't trying to shoot them down or knock them down. Uh, they just tend to be just messing with them. You know, it's like we did to the Iranians just recently. A F-22 flew up underneath an F-4 Phantom that we sold to the Iranians and sat there. Mm -hmm. They didn't know it was there because it had stealth capability. It just sat there. And the pilots were laughing because they were talking to each other. Two F-2, two pilots, and he, they just, he kind of rolled out to the side, got on the thing. He said, I think it's time for you to turn around and go home, don't you? Because, <laughs> I mean, he had no idea. This thing could have knocked him out of the sky a hundred times. Well, it's the same thing with the with the alien craft. I mean, we have no idea. I mean, they're just too fast, too stealthy. <clears throat> so we know they're not eyes, and we know they're not the Russians or the Chinese because we know we're more advanced than they are. Mm -hmm. So if it's not ours, then and whose is it? Exactly. So it's turning out to, yeah, so more and more the government, and it's one of the reasons the government came out with this is they needed an in, a way to get in and say, okay, well, we've had enough good witnesses that we know something's going on. Mm-hmm. So now we can get committees together and we can go look at this and we can go look at that. And most of that will be classified. We won't get to see it, but, but some of it will get leaked out and some of, of the stuff will be told to us uh, slowly, but surely, but you know, I told everybody this, it's 2024. So about 35 years ago, I used to tell people about the desensitization program that they were going to use so that one day there could be open contact on our planet. Mm -hmm. We're about, about two thirds of the way there. One of the things is finding liquid water on Mars, which we recently found. Uh, the next thing will be is uh, some type of artifact, which they think they found. And mm. then we'll find some type of life, uh, an amoeba, a grass blade, something that shows that there's life in other worlds, but it's harmless to us. It's not something that's going to come eat, uh, you know, humans. <clears throat> the next thing after that will probably be to find something a little bit more advanced. And then, We'll find some ruins, but there'll be ancient ruins. So there'll be ruins suggested a civilization, but you know, maybe a million years ago, maybe 10 million years ago, something that's not an immediate threat to us. Right. And then we'll find something a little closer until we get to the point where we can introduce our society to open contact. Because right now you can't tell the world that aliens are real. They'll flip out. I mean, the religious people alone will flip out so bad it, it won't even be funny. You have but, four. But million. so many people say that they're real. I mean, you know, I, the first that go on. I'm sorry, go on. Oh no. So, so a lot of people say Jesus is real, but if you see him in person, you would trip. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I'd be trip. dead. I think the only way I'm going to see him is I'm just he either <laughs> well, a I, well, a I'm too. dead or b he comes back. You know, and neither yeah, of them are so. very good options. So. Yeah, but I, but I, that, I, but, I get the point. Yeah, I get yeah, it. So, <laughs> right now, it, it was a, really, it's a good time to get out there and get information, but it's also a bad time because uh, they want the information you can get. And once they get their little sticky fingers on it, they bottle it up again. Mm -hmm. But they're not, they're not actually trying to hide it. They're just trying to, they're playing catch up. So the open U.S. government is playing catch up. They have no idea what's going on. Most of the mm -hmm. researchers have a better idea than what they do. Okay, wait, okay. Advanced. Back up one minute. I want to go back to before you go on with that, the artifact that oh. you spoke about. What kind of an artifact? You said they, you think they recently found what kind of an artifact well, did they find on think the they planet? Found a couple of, yeah, they think they found a couple of things. So, first off, found this thing that looks like some type of little figurine or something. But recently, one of the, um, one of the surveyors took a better picture of the Sedona region. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that those buildings, that there's buildings there and roads, there's no doubt. And those are five-sided pyramids. There's no doubt that they're pyramids. They're not made by the wind because they're too even. Mm -hmm. So the new, the new picture rules out the face on Mars. It also helps to prove the existence of what looks like ruins on Sedonia region on Mars. So if you look at a, a picture of ruins like in South America or mm -hmm. in the desert in Egypt. And then you go back and look at these ruins on Mars. It looks the same. Yeah. It's more than that because you can see what looks like a wide breezeway or, or roadway. And then what looks to be 
things that run off to the sides, like sidewalks or things like that, or side roads or things like that. Mm-hmm. Obvious. I mean, and, and they're obvious. It's, it's not like it's, it, I mean, you can really make them out yeah. clearly. Yeah. So those things are there, but the couple of, and then they found, call it an artifact, but it's not actually an artifact. They found the, a tunnel, but the entrance is carved. On Mars? Or yeah. So they're like, well, that couldn't have happened. Well, that's pretty creepy. And so yeah, so the, it face creeps me out. You know, the idea that something's out there digging tunnels is just like, no, I don't want to. Well, I mean, as far as we know, it was us. I mean, you know, people are weird, but humans, optimal body temperature is around 63 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where Mars was 55 million years ago. And our body clock is set to a 24 and a quarter hour day, which is what Mars has. Mm-hmm. Earth has a 23, three quarter hour day and the optimal temperature here is 73 degrees. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it doesn't sound like we're native to this planet. I, I apologize guy that we invaded your planet, yeah. um, but somebody killed ours. So we had to come visit you. Uh, it's, uh, I don't, I don't think we belong here either. I don't, I don't think we had any business in this, uh, in this system, you know, I mean it, on earth in the ecosystem. I just don't think so because well, we we're, can't. We're the, we're the oddball here of everything. Yeah, else I mean, I agree. At least in that, you know, that physically, so I don't think we were meant to be part of this system, and somehow or another, we either got inserted here, we're, we're, dropped we're here. A slave, right? Well, I was picking on. I was picking on a friend of mine today on, on when I was doing my show before y'all, mm-hmm. and I was telling her, I said, "You got a freaking free choice." I said, "You're an alien slave. For sooner or later, they're coming back for you." And she's like, "Joe," I'm like. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't make you a slave. It wasn't me. Some damn tall, linky human alien. You know, two million years ago. Don't hate on me about it. And the <laughs> reptilians came and freed you. Don't don't get all mad. Oh, and, uh, oh my god. Well, it's you know, it. so well, the Sumerians are great story givers because they talk about the seven creations of man, mm-hmm. with the the creation before us being the, their last creation. They uh-huh. created a subspecies of man. It was just like us, a little bit short, a little bit stockier. They could do things like breed and, you know, plow the fields and make the wine, but they never asked why they had to do it. They never asked, they never questioned anything. Mm-hmm. They weren't sentient like we are. Sumerians talk about, and not just the Sumerians talk about this, but the Dogon and the Egyptians talk about this as well. So the reptilians were hanging out with the Dogons, the Nemos were hanging out with the, the, the Dogons, mm-hmm. and they went down to Samaria, stole a bunch of their women, raped them, sent them back pregnant. Well, these women that were born, according to the Sumerians, were born different. And this is all in, in several different writings. So it's hard to dis, dis, discount it because of how it's written in different places. Mm-hmm. So so you've got this. and these. Cho- so the very first time I ever heard the story, I said, oh, well, maybe they were mutants. You know, <laughs> maybe that's why they were different. But that's not what they meant. It meant that they were different, that they were sentient. So mm. all of us have a reptilian section in our brain. Every human on the planet has a reptilian section in their brain. And without it, we would be subservient little you know what. Mm-hmm. It's what makes us who we are. It's what makes a, it makes you you, what makes mm-hmm. her her, what makes me me. Without it, we would not be who we are today. It doesn't make you aggressive. Mm-hmm. But it does make you who, it makes you assert your personality. So that changed everything. When that happened, of course, there was more of them than there were of the aliens. There was a revolution. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, was so we got the reptilians to thank for freeing the human slave race to become the race we are today. Well, since then, somehow or another, the grays got their DNA mixed up with us. But throw you a curveball backwards for two million years, man was brown hair, brown skin, and brown eyed and O positive. I mean, and, and, and positive blood. We don't even know what it was. We just know it was positive. Mm-hmm. No negative, just positive. And they were brown eyed, brown skin. Uh, there was no mutations in, in whatsoever. And they can't find anywhere that there was mutation until about 40,000 years ago, RH negative showed up on the scene. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows why, nobody knows how, and nobody can explain why or how it just showed up. When it did, it, it changed everything. One, um, that's why you had to get blood tests was because if you were RH negative and your spouse was positive, you could have a stillborn baby. Right, right. Problems. Mm-hmm. So, so the thing about that was, is until recently, until they they had found that they created a gene to fix that, or they found the gene to fix that, is what I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So no one can figure out why RH came along. What do we need it for? Why did Mother Nature give us something that kills babies? Mm -hmm. What was that? Because remember, it's 15% of our population. And back then, it would have been killing a whole hell of a lot of babies. Yeah. So a lot of stillborn. So why, why would this be? And then we find out later on in life that, of course, O negative is the universal donor. Mm hmm and that changed everything. That changed the way we fought wars. It changed the way we do hospitals. It changed everything. Yeah. And then we find that that it's the purest form of blood known to man. Mm -hmm. So a mutation out of nowhere, because that's what this is, a mutation. That's what RH negative is, is a mutation. Changed our entire society. And not just that, it gave us blue and green eyes, which gave us a whole host of other colored eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, green. So I think goes, they say green or the rarest or hazel, actually. And it goes um, back I, and forth. Sometimes it's green. I, I don't know. It goes back and forth all the time. Last time, it depends where you check. Sometimes it's as low as 1%. Sometimes it's as high as 5 and the blues can be as high as 16 and as low as 7. Mm -hmm. It just depends what site you're on. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of weirdness that comes with this. One, we did the research. When we, we, we did, I think we're over 70,000 cases now, what we, we got the blood types on. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, the majority of people being taken had RH negative blood. Oh, you mean Not abducted, being taken, yeah. abducted? Being taken, okay, about sixty percent or sixty-five percent of the people being taken had RH negative blood. Hmm. So that was just weird. Mm -hmm. Then we found out that a good more than half of them were green or blue-eyed. Hmm. Now you flip to the future to now, mm -hmm. and you go, okay. The majority of people who control the music industry and the movie industry and politics are green or blue eyed. Oh. They're the minority by far. I have yeah. green eyes. I have green eyes, O negative blood. And most uh, people with green eyes have O negative blood. Yeah, I have well eyes. actually no, I have hazel eyes. They change, they do change colors, and I have O negative blood. Um and yeah, I think I'm they, I don't know. They think I'm probably from Atlantis. <laughs> That's well, actually true. Is, you know, well, the whole thing true. is very <laughs> weird because there was there was no. I mean, it didn't exist for all of man's creation. Uh, RH positive and and brown eyes have existed far longer than O negative. I mean, RH negative or green or blue eyes. I mean, we're yeah. talking a, a scale of millions of years longer. Ooh, oh, and the so RH happened, thing too, that applied when I had my, when I had my daughter, um, you had to get, give injections or whatever because of the RH thing. So I've got yeah, three boxes yeah, yeah. checked. I've got three boxes checked so far. <laughs> By the well, end yeah, of the yeah, show, yeah. I might find out I'm an alien. <laughs> you're probably, you're, well, you're probably just being probed and don't know it, but you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like most most contactees never know they're being or most abductees never know they're being taken anyway. So oh, no. 98%, and, and they like southerners for some reason. I don't know, maybe because we no. sweet or something, but uh, high in cholesterol. I don't know what it is, you know, but um it's 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 strange. But so you have these weird, these just weird, whatever you want to call them, coincidences, uh, that are running into each other. And you have to wonder, well, how did this blood type? And then we find out something else. RH stands for rhesus monkey. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that because uh, RH positive people share 2% of their genes with rhesus monkey. Well, guess what? Mm. RH negative people don't. Right. They don't have no monkey blood. Mm -hmm. No monkey uh -oh. monkey. So is this like, is this like an offshoot or is this becoming a separate species? Um, it's kind of weird, but there it are is differences. Weird. There are differences between personalities of RH negative and RH positive people. Mm -hmm. There's different behaviors. There's been lots of scientific studies because no one actually ever thought that your blood itself would be one of the things, one of the factors in how your personality works. Mm -hmm. And they said that the the reptilian, the reptilian inside of you for RH negative people is more is more powerful than our RH positive. I think it's the other way around. I think it's more more stronger for RH positive than for RH negative. Mm. But you know, it's 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 uh, because I, it's you know most of my friends that are positive are pretty aggressive, mm -hmm. not in a mean way. They just it's just who they are. But yeah, they uh, have aggressive personalities. And since RH positive makes too much uh, reptilian, what? Yeah, too it might be reptilian. too much reptilian. Might be. 
But, um, RH positive is what eighty five percent of the world's population. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. Know. So that's no, so it's real. Yeah. Dean, go ahead. She has a question. So. Go ahead, Christian. I didn't know you changed your name, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, she she has a question. <laughs> I know. I was just giving her shit. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> um, how do you feel about um, you know, like the kids coming up today? Some of them are so intelligent, some savants, and they they just have so much intelligence at such a young age. How do you feel about that and hybrids? Well, so in 2000, you got hold of one of the census, census that shows a group of children. Well, the first time we seen this actually was in 1990, but in 2000, uh, we seen it again. So there's a group of children in the United States, about 14 to 15 percent, that are way, 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 way above their learning curve. One of the things about contactees and abductees are is they tend to be above their education level. I always tend to be quite a bit smarter than whatever they school was. Whether they went to 9, 10, 12, bachelor's, masters, it doesn't really matter. I always seem to be smarter than whatever their education, and usually quite a bit smarter than what their educational level is. Now, you can give the internet credit for some of that, but not, not for all of it. And really, the internet wasn't all that popular in the 90s, so. Oh, no, yeah. It was so just started. 2000. So it looks like, uh, and since they put the number of contactees in the world around 15%, and the number of these children around 15%, that's a big coincidence. Hmm. So the, these kids are probably coming from these advanced contactees. That's probably where they're coming from. Yeah. And because Some they contactees call crystal, crystal and indigo. Yeah. Well, they call them star children, crystal seeds, uh, star, star seeds, children. indigo, and uh, but the problem is, I think all of them are really the same thing. I think they just it's, I think they they like to change them a little bit. I think, but when you get right down to what they really do and what they really are, I think they're really the same thing, um, the, the same same being or same function or whatever you want to call it. it. Seems to be because you know I've met people who claim to be star seeds and and a couple of the other types, and they all kind of when it comes right down to it, seem to be very telepathic, very empathic, um, and personality-wise about the same, which I find interesting. Not mean or vindictive, really usually pretty nice kind of people, but with a little streak of, I guess, a protective meanness, I guess you would call it. Um, hybrids are different because there's not so much alien hybrids as there are human hybrids. So they, the humans create, I mean, the humans, the aliens create human hybrids for whatever this program they have running is that they're going to put together. Because, you know, if I had a dollar for every contactee who told me they saw rows and rows and rows and rows of bodies in tubes and ships standing up that looked like them, um, I could retire. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that they're adjusting us. Uh, they're, they're doing hybrids with us probably to live off world somewhere. So if you were going to live on a two or three G planet, they would have to adjust your body uh, to do so. So they already know how to upload consciousness to a new body. So all they do is take you, stand you there, upload your consciousness into the new body. The old body falls away and dies. And you're now in the new body doing whatever, which usually is going to probably have more, more powerful brain and more powerful body. Um, so it looks like that's what they're doing. But as far as, 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 Regular hybrids, they don't really need them. I mean, they don't need, the grays don't need hybrids because they can do a couple of things. <clears throat> One, they can just get in your damn head and stay there. So, I mean, you're walking around. You don't know if it's you, them, or, or if it's whoever. Uh, they just take control, and that's just it. Reptilians, humans have to do it a different way, but they, they can, and they can just take control of your consciousness. Uh, so it, it it changes things. So they don't really need hybrids for the aliens, but they do need hybrids for the humans. That was a confusing thing for me when I first got into this because I always thought they were using humans to enhance aliens. Well, one of the things ICAR does is we'll take 50 contactees at a time and give them a question. Mm -hmm. Next time they get abducted, that they automatically telepathically send the question uh, to the, the alien that's abducted them to try to get an answer, which works really well. Because none of the contactees know each other. It's 50 random contactees out of the organization. None of them know each other. No one but them know what the question is. 
So when the alien asks and you get 50 of the same answers back, you know you hit on something. And we've learned a few things like that. Well, when, when we asked about um, were the grays, were the grays making hybrid grays out of humans, it's the first time I ever seen that they had a temper. Oh. They, were, they were offended, to say the least. Uh, they were like, why would we contaminate our pure DNA with you? Um, yeah, for, you know, for them, we're still, you know, we're still kind of like, you know, the human Bottom aliens. The yeah, so the human aliens look at us like trash, like they're trash cousins. With they're funny because they they will take one or two humans that they really really like and will excel like, them. For the most part, they think human are their trash cousins. Reptilians are much different because we're much more like the reptilians. Um, they but they have one religion one government, even though they have like 14 different tribes, but they're real bound, but they act, a, or we act a light like them. Very tight about family. Uh, they keep it inside. Uh, a lot of our, our bad habits are their bad habits. I, I find that interesting. I should say a lot of their bad habits are our bad habits. Um, and they can be very aggressive, just like we can be very aggressive. So it's interesting. But they're the most protective of us. They, they consider us family. So if you attack one of us, it's like attacking one of them. So they're different when it comes to that. Grays kind of look at us like pets. So one gray might be the same gray that's abducting you today, maybe in the same gray that abducted your grandmother 100 times removed, so say 100,000 years ago. It'd be the same gray. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're like, you know, you're like pets. You know, you're one pet being replaced with the next pet being replaced with the next pet. You just have it. And, but you know, the grays do laugh. They do have emotions. Uh, they don't wear them on their sleeves like some of the other races do, but uh, <clears throat> but they are proud. Like sometimes when we when a, when we do one of those questionnaire things, and the um, contactee asks the gray a question telepathically, the gray gets all tickled and proud. Like, look, my puppy knows how to use telepathy now. <laughs> you know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to remember this race is probably a billion years old. They work for the light beings as as basically the galactic policemen. I mean. It's not. It's hard for them to take us serious right now. Even though, since it looks like we share all three of their DNA now, which means one day we may surpass all of them and may even become a light being ourselves one day in the future, we're worth watching and keeping an eye on because we are a bit crazy. Um, you know, you don't want us getting into space quite yet, you know, at least until we unite no, the planet. Not we, right. <laughs> Now, we're, we're, Not you know, with the crap we're capable of down here. No, 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 no. no, no. So, <laughs> and besides, the weapons we'd have to have in space would be much more dangerous than ones we got today. So, uh, you know, I, and I think they want to watch over us and, and see how two, Steve. Two worlds. Yeah, mm. and, well, probably more than that. You know, look what we did to poor Africa or even South America. I mean, you know, I remember back seeing commercials. I mean, uh, uh, real clips of, you know, handing them big lighters and T-shirts and stuff and, you know, basically turning them into little, you know, I don't know what you do. You, it, do you remember the movie, Joe, The Gods Must Be Crazy, where the, it was set in Africa and somebody, there was a plane flying over and somebody threw out a Coke bottle, an empty Coke bottle out of the plane and it fell on the ground in front of an African. <laughs> do you remember that? They thought the gods... Sent the sent the Coke bottle. I, you know, I can't give you the whole plot because uh, it was in the seventies. You know, I was not watching it for uh, erudition. <laughs> you know, I was watching it to be entertained. But I mean, I guess that's what <laughs> I guess that's what we're like to them. Then you're saying it's like you know yeah, they, when the stuff just, falls out of the sky and you know we go and they they take it or we you know whatever we supposedly have debris and bodies and stuff. They must think we're you know they must think we're not <laughs> and, and you know for them they don't they don't really look at us any different today than they did a thousand years ago we're basically the same species we haven't really mm -hmm. grown much we're, our technology's grown but our being hasn't really grown so did it's they come from did they come entertainment yeah we are yeah, yeah we we're are like they're, some they're streaming yeah we're streaming to them but um so they're are they like inter intragalactic like they're in this Galaxy? Do they come from yeah, somewhere they come outside? From somewhere, yeah. I mean, like no, they're we, from the galaxy. Out, they're, they're just they're they're started probably, out on Mars, though. Mars had physical beings, is what you're saying. At one time, yeah, so, so, did so, they, the, 
So at one time there was probably because there there was a planet between Mars and Jupiter, which was about five times the size of Earth. So in, in the beginning, they always said that was just leftover debris, but now they're finding metals that can only be compressed by planetary development. So pretty sure mm-hmm. it was a planet. And then there was Mars, then there was Earth, and then there were then there was Venus. All four planets are inside the the inhabitable zone. Well, Venus's upper atmosphere is identical to Earth's. Mm-hmm. Identical. So at one time it was just like Earth was. As a matter of fact, they even think there might be some life in the atmosphere of Venus. Yeah, because they said down close to the to the yeah. uh, the surface of Venus is uninhabitable. It's like the yeah. pressure and the the sulfur. They have a lot of sulfur, but further up now high. Is, but, yeah, but, but fifty five million years ago, it might have just been just like. So they think really right. around sixty million years ago, Venus, Mars, Earth, and this fifth planet were all inhabitable planets. Mm. Well, so really and truly, the graves, reptilians, and humans could come from this solar system. Uh, I mean, the gray's body would be perfect for Mars, long and lanky, no bones, cartilage. Because on Mars, you know, it's it's one third the gravity of Earth, so you can jump. You don't have to have stairs, so you just jump from the first floor to the second floor. And with long, lanky arms and legs, it would be easier to move around in a very low G atmosphere. It's not like here, uh, where you'd actually have to work if you were them. Uh, the mm. reptilians look like they come from a, like maybe a two or three world atmosphere because they're thick and heavy. You know, they're around seven or eight foot tall. They're looking like six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Very stocky, very heavy. Um, mm. So it's it's some people think that, you know, because it's a heavy world, people might be short. And eh, I don't think that really matters. Um, and then, you know, on on Mars, it's a low light atmosphere. So right. it might be why they the raid the 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 um grays invented those patches they put over their eyes uh, so you know, there's a lot of things that could fit into them coming from here mm-hmm. but when you when you ask the story when you ask contactees to find out to get the information he said they come from a uh, a planet way on the other side of the galaxy they were found by the light beams when the light beams came from a different galaxy to this one they found the galaxy was our galaxy was in a big nasty war but when they found the grays they turn the greys into a very advanced a super race that could help them bring the wars under control. Now, there's not supposed to be any wars now. I think it's supposed to be a big, peaceful, you know, 160,000 a year across galaxy now. I guess mm-hmm. we'll find out what we'll out there. Who knows? It could all be a big, big lie, but it's, uh, it's interesting to see these races here. It's interesting to see that they don't directly interfere for the most part, because somebody said, well, they would never let us nuke the planet. Well, that's not true. Uh, we yeah. nuked Hiroshima and Nagasaki, last I remember. Mm-hmm. And then there was Three Mile Island, which blew up. Well, it released the radiation to the atmosphere. Then, there was, of course, <coughs> Ch- Chernobyl and, of Chernobyl, course, Fukushima. Yeah. And we, and so, I mean, these are all big radiation. It doesn't seem like they give a good blame. If we get irradiated, that's our stupidity. I don't think they really care. And they probably have the ability to get rid of radiation. So, uh, you know, if we if we nuke ourselves or kill ourselves, they just get a free planet out the deal. <laughs> uh, and they're like, well, it's stupid humans. Uh, we, we told you stupid humans not to do that, but oh, you don't want to listen to us. Uh, and I'm sure like any other race, they probably had their problems getting to where they are today. But they really are. So and that's another funny thing. When I got into this field 40 years ago. They used to always tell me, oh, the grays work for the light beans. The grays work for the reptilians. So that's the stance we took when we founded the organization is that they work for everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, when we started asking questions, we found out things like, oh, the, there'd be like a four-foot gray standing there and a reptilian or u- human alien would walk in and see the gray and he'd put his head down and look, and look down at the floor. Mm-hmm. Well, that don't sound like that he's working for him. It sounds like they're scared of him. Yeah. And then, and then after you got an, enough reports, the grays going in and removing contactees from reptilians or humans or from Milab cases, basically killing everybody that was there, we realized that, oh no, they're way more powerful than the other races are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would imagine they're just by the size of their head, their male abilities are probably on a magnitude 50 or 100 times stronger than any of the other races. They were supposed to be designed to protect galaxies, so maybe that's what they're doing. So who are the um, who are the light beings? Who are Nobody these? Knows. They're, they're a race that migrated from our galaxy millions of years ago. Their galaxy died. That's that's what they said anyway. Their galaxy died, and uh, we were the closest galaxy to them. Actually, rode in on another galaxy 
uh, they they their galaxy down, and they found a galaxy that was moving, being sucked in our galaxy because you know our galaxy eating currently eating five galaxies right now. Hmm. Uh, and they came in on that, and then when they got here, they found that our, the majority of the Milky Way was in a big nasty galactic war, and uh, so they decided to intervene and bring peace to to chaos, and that's what supposedly happened. The light beings are, are different because all aspects of when you talk about the light beings, you might as well be talking about God. Mm-hmm. They can move through time and space by thought. They can build, build buildings or spaces or even planets by thought. There's no technologies involved. Um, they don't need technology in any shape, form, or fashion. They can create at will. The only person I know that can create at will is God. So it's 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 kind of crazy. I like to cue a Star Trek is what they are. Mm-hmm. And, and um and they're a very powerful race and I that guess sounds a lot like angels up to the creation point although angels can create if god lo- if god allows them yeah it archangels sounds a lot like create, right i know archangels mm-hmm. can create to an extent so it's uh but who knows i mean see that's that's the real problem with all of this um uh, so i've talked with father um Oh, what's his name? Uh, Monsignor Balducci, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paula Harris was translating for us into Washington, D.C. press club. So she wanted me to meet him, and I met him. So I asked him point blank, what does the Vatican think about aliens? He said, oh, no, no, Mr. Joe. And then he started speaking you know, Italian. Mm-hmm. She's translating. He said, well, no, they know they exist. They know they've existed since the Vatican began. And the Pope and, and the bishops and all leave his words that the aliens are closer to God than we are, quite a bit closer to God than we are. Mm-hmm. And understand creation much better than we do. It's their own personal beliefs. So I needed to verify that. I mean, Monsignor Vaduce is pretty big in the church, but, you know, that's one person. I ran into the Vatican's astronomer about a year after that, and he verified it, and he introduced me to a bishop and a um, cardinal, cardinals, and they verified it. Mm. And they they think that the current aliens out there, whether they're reptilian, humans, or greys, closer to God than we are. And they mean it closer to God. Uh, that like we could learn a lot from them when it comes mm-hmm. to the creation. Which would make sense. I mean, if they if they're a billion years old, they're gonna have a different opinion of God than we are. I mean, they've been all across the cosmos, they've watched creation for themselves. Um, so they're gonna have a different opinion. But as far mm-hmm. as I know, I don't know about the grades, but the reptilians and the humans definitely believe in, in religion. Mm-hmm. They definitely have a religion. The, the grades, I think the grades just worship the light beings. I, I, and that's that's a guess. That's not any. Even, that's not even an informed opinion. It's just a guess because they don't show any emotions towards a religion. I haven't shown any emotions towards a religion. Mm-hmm. Um, they're on, they're like a beehive. They're the, the three footers, you got the three foot grays with the three foot grays that run the three foot, um, what do you call them? Not androids, um, half you, half half machine, half gray, and then you've got the five six foot grays who do a lot of the abductions, a lot of the hard work, and then you've got the seven foot grays which basically attend the queen and her court, which are all nine foot tall. Um, it's like a it's like some kind of weird beehive. Okay, so now we're off into conspiracy areas, <laughs> I guess. Because yeah, that's 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 just what that's just no 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 no. Great. My que- I'm saying my question, not yeah. you, um, because the reptilians have a really bad reputation, not among all people, but among oh, people right. uh, who the conspir- true. because they so. claim that you know that the world is ruled by this cabal of you know this. One percent of or 0.5 percent that are reptilians in human form and you know they dictate the whole thing uh you know the everything that goes on in the world they dictate and and they're uh, they're just uh portrayed as not friendly uh, obviously alien probably evil and they say that they're hiding among us so that first doesn't off, sound I mean, like your reptilians. Uh, well, first off, I mean, our planet harbored reptilians for 250 million or 350 million years. Mm. So it's, it's not even beyond reason they didn't come from here. And we're the invaders, not them. 
Mm-hmm. They may have went. They may have went on the ground when the asteroid was coming to hide out for a couple of million years, and then came back and found, "Oh my God, there's roaches on my planet." <laughs> um, I mean, you got to look at it from their point of view. But but regardless, you know it's not true because first off, um, when you hear people talk about the aliens, one, they haven't wiped us out or ate us or killed us, right? And but they haven't enlightened us either. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it doesn't show that there's so much here for us, but here for themselves, just God only knows. But so when you look at the reptilians, you got to look at it correctly. So South America worships the reptilians as for 5,000 years. Mm-hmm. The, the ancient Aztecs and Incans will believe that, you know, Kublai Kai or whatever it was called the big, the, the, the sun snake God was a bearer of life and a bringing life, but it wasn't just them prior to Christianity the entire Middle East and most of India and all of them believed reptilians were good. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. reptilians didn't get a bad rap until Christ's birth. Mm-hmm. And it was about 500 years after that that all of a sudden everything was getting blamed on the reptiles. But only in the civilized white world, not in any of the rest of the world. And still even today, it's not only it's only really in the white civilized world, it's not in the rest of the world. The rest mm-hmm. of the world still thinks reptilians are not evil. They think they're here to save us. If you ask the Dogon, they'll tell you the Dogon, they taught the Dogon all kind of stuff. Now tell me what a Dogon the, is. Um, because uh, I know who Dogon, the who is do, who they, are the Dogons? They're an African tribe that live in the okay. mountains in Egypt. They think Egypt, the Egyptians may have came from them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's what they say. Regardless, the Dogons had regular contact with reptilian aliens. Mm-hmm. So the Dogon based their calendars based on a 55.5 years, right? That's their calendar. Right. Well, the orbit of Cirrus A is 55.5 years. Mm-hmm. You can't see it with your eye. You can only see it with a radio telescope. Right. They also told them Cirrus B and C, which science said never exists. And guess what? They both exist. Mm-hmm. They did brain surgery on people 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, and they lived. Mm-hmm. And and all over their caves, they show you advanced structure of the human re- repertories. There's no way some African tribe in Egypt knew this shit. Somebody had no. to tell them. No. And I know they find, um, they've been finding uh, for years now, these vases and other artifacts that are uh, smooth and, you know, so well created that some type of machinery was used. There's no possible way. That it was, you know, any human pottery or, or any human, you know, influence on the creation of this. And they found, um, you know, these huge, uh, I guess they look like tombs, big, giant, and they're empty, but big, square, with the angles being so perfect that you just couldn't get it if you were constructing them or chiseling them at the human level. So they're finding all that in Egypt, Um Mostly, mostly in Egypt. So, I mean, that that in itself shows that somebody, mm-hmm. something came out of those. They they believe that something was in them, that not that something was buried in them, but that they came that out of those things. It's I don't know, I don't know yeah. where. Yeah, but I mean, it's in yeah. Egypt, and then they have Gobeki, Tekli, I think it is, and you know all this. Well, there's a lot of stuff out there that that warrant, you know, what the hell going on in this planet. I mean, you have monuments that only line up with their constellations at 12,500 years ago. Who the yeah. hell taught the Inca people at Angkor Wat how to do procession? Uh, so that, or who taught the Egyptians how to line well, up? The Sphinx. The Sphinx is lined up at, a, at that. Yeah. Y- so yeah that's 12,500 years. It, it, so exactly. In, e- in Egypt, you've got the three great pyramids line up with um, the Orion's belt at 12,500 years. The Sphinx lines up with Leo at 12,500 years. Yeah. Easter Island lines up with the Seven Sisters at 12,500 years. And Cor Watts lines up with Draco at 12,500 years, which is mm-hmm. interesting because Draco is supposed to be the home world of the Greys, or one mm-hmm. of the worlds of the Greys anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot which ones. Uh, it's not the Seven Sisters. Ones that line up with Stonehenge. But you have several monuments on this planet only line up with their constellations at 12,500 years ago. Now, most of those monuments were built in the last 6,000 years. Mm-hmm. Who, the hell, who the hell knew how to go backwards 6,000 years? Yeah. I, I mean, were you doing that on a sand tablet 
or a Chinese calculator? I don't know, man. That's that sounds a little. That sounds a little like uh, that's yeah. awesome. You know what to admit. <laughs> um, that sounds like somebody else was was around. So there are things on our planet, and we do shows on what they call O parts, out of place artifacts, mm-hmm. things that you know, like they found a cog and a piece of coal. The coal was about five million, or yeah, yeah, about five million years old. And yeah, how to get there? I mean. They found stuff. They they found they found two different batteries. Now one of, they found three batteries actually, but one of the batteries was a found in a geo was a hoax. But they found another one in a geo that wasn't a hoax, and they found another one in some box in the desert in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, and and then you know we used to know how to electroplate gold two thousand years ago. Yeah, the Romans built concrete that we still can't reproduce today. Yeah, that's true. You know, so there's things, there's, there's things, you know, you know, everybody always talks about the burning of the Great Library of Alexander. I wonder sometimes if the aliens didn't have something to do with that. Because mm-hmm. most scientists will tell you that the burning of Alexander probably put us back a thousand years. And the Hispanic or the Inquisitions and the, um, the Inquisitions and the Crusades in the 1500s probably put us back another 500 years. Mm-hmm. Was, there were so many books burned. That, you know, we don't know what we lost. Yeah, and we we just don't know the stuff that was supposed to be in, in, in the museum. I mean, in the Alexander, that it was just God knows what we lost. I mean, there was, was supposed to be all kind of secrets, and including how the crystals at Atlantis worked. So, mm-hmm. and evidence of where Atlantis was. I, it's just you don't know what's real and what's not. But I mean, we knew the it was a big library. It was full of a lot of stuff. It had been collecting stuff for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And poof, it was gone. Right. Nobody knows why, what panel, you know, what was in it, why it was in it. You know, and over the years, over time, I mean, we just watched in the Middle East just a few years ago them burning all kind of monuments, you know, them down yeah. in the Middle East. Yeah. Mm. You know, when you when you it, it's just they're doing they that. Do so yeah. Much. They yeah, that well, was they're, yeah, they're doing it for yeah, they're doing that for their religion, but it's uh so they theirs will be more important ever to forget about the other one, but still. You know, when you look at this in a grand scheme and think how far we're set back, um, I know the think tank in New York came back and said religion is responsible for setting us back a thousand years. Music, so they figure right now mankind today is about twenty five hundred years back, which mm-hmm. should be twenty five hundred years more intelligent than we are. But to be honest with you, I'm not sure if that would have been a good thing. We're not really. I mean, we're having a hard time controlling ourselves with cell phones. <laughs> I don't imagine what we're going to have in 2,500 years, man. I mean, I was watching this guy driving a Tesla the other day. Oh, I'm sorry. He wasn't driving a Tesla. He had it was driving. His dashboard. Yeah, mm-hmm. He was out sound snoring away. Yeah. Because the guy was asking Elon Musk, is this, this what this car is for? He said, well, now we fixed that. You let go of the wheel too long. It starts to slow down and stop. That's like, and it makes some noise. Exactly. There would be, I mean, there was some major accident. Somebody was watching a movie and fell asleep. And uh, yeah. there was another woman that almost got run over by one that was actually just driving itself. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just an automatic yeah. drive car and it, you know, it didn't stop. It's supposed to, you know, recognize what's a pedestrian and what other obstacles and almost killed her, you know, but, um, yeah, they asked me I yesterday if I thought aliens gave us AI. I said, <laughs> no, aliens probably don't need nothing as stupid as AI. I think they got something more more advanced. It's, um, well, we're going to destroy ourselves with AI. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I just, some, you know, we're not going to be able to tell what's real and what's not real <laughs> and, and already. It's getting hard. It's getting hard. I mean, I've done, I've done some, um, Weird for me because a couple of years ago, um, one of the writers of the future winners calls me and he goes, he says, uh, Jeff Weiner, he was one of the winners. He goes, Joe, let's talk about this AI. I'm like, what do you mean? What AI? Because, you know, there's a lot of different AIs. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. So he calls me, he gets on. Banner I use for UFO on the cover today was created by AI in five seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good banner. So we use yeah. it today. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it's not really great at writing stories. It's getting better. But he made a comic book. With all the artwork, all the little bubbles, all the everything in it, and about three minutes, and it was actually a decent comic book. And AI wrote it. He just yeah, gave so it what me. he did, so he writes a description of what he wants in in the in the bubbles. He writes a description of what's what kind of you know pictures he wants, and it does the rest. Right, it's good. It's the um, you'd have to go look, but it's uh, UFO on the cover. It's Jeff Weiner's show, and uh, mm-hmm. it, was, it was it was amazing. 
And this was this was at least four or five years ago. It's, it's more advanced since then. It's uh, so I got um, so I got kind of lumped in as as oh well, Joe's an expert on AI. I'm like, hmm. I do have a bachelor's <laughs> in science, and I do know advanced electronics and AI, but expert on AI, I'm not. Yeah. I got a call from uh, Miami PD. <laughs> so so supposedly there's a there's a nine foot alien rampaging around outside of the mall. And then it was raging around inside the mall and people were freaking out and stuff. So get I get the thing from them, <clears throat> the 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 pamphlet, I mean the questionnaire thing they sent me. Well, first I talked to two of them, and then I get the questionnaire thing. So I'm filling it out and I'm telling them why they're idiots. Mm-hmm. And I actually used the word idiot twice. I said, uh, okay. I said, first off, if you look at the upper rail, no one's actually staring at the middle. No one's got a camera out and no one is running. Right. Supposedly, there's a picture of the the nine foot alien walking through the middle of a mall, kind of like in this weird distorted thing, but you can see it. Mm-hmm. So then, so then I got to looking. So AI is weird about stretching hands and feet out. It still hasn't figured out yeah. how to do it. Mm-hmm. So this thing was like some kind of collage of three people everything kind of blurred and stretched that's what it was so i broke it apart and sent it to him and he wrote me back and he said how long did it take you to figure this out i said 14 minutes he's <laughs> like he was like you shit me we've been doing this for like a week and a half i said mm. sorry to hear that <laughs> wow. and so i so I, so I broke down the picture outside for him and showed him you know why it was fake and they were like man you're really good at this you, you know you're gonna be the expert i'm like oh shit <laughs> don't call me less. Um, ex- experts get a paycheck, is what I told him. <laughs> so well, you're I experts, mean, you get a paycheck. You're not, a, you're AI, not an expert, you get a paycheck. I, I've seen people do a lot of AI, and you're right about the hands. They, if you you know you can really tell they give them like six and eight fingers on one hand, or they can't. You know, I guess it's going to well, improve. Times they're just stretch. You know, they're, yeah. just, they're just too long for the body, but we're out mm-hmm. of proportion. And it will get better, like everything else. It'll get better, and the stories will get better. But the other problem is, is you can't own anything you make by AI. Right. Yeah. So AI uses everything on the internet, which is owned by somebody. They'll select from stories and videos, and they'll put it all together. So you can't. You can make some great stuff with it, and you can make money off of it, but you mm-hmm. can't own it. So, so it, so let's say you come up with this really great thing, and it goes viral. Well, Joe Smo and Jane Smo. Mm-hmm. And go make it too, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because you can't, you can't copyright anything made by AI, which mm. I guess is a good thing. It'll keep people honest for the most part. Um, yeah, and they'll they'll still do it. They'll still steal it. Yeah, no matter what. So, but um, with all of this that you've talked about, we go back to the government, our you know, and that hearing or whatever that was. Um, months ago why on earth would they call attention to all of this uh, you know to the whole ufo phenomena to they didn't have a choice the, the regulars the, the normal everyday people in congress want to know and nobody yeah. will tell them and nobody on any of the big committees will tell them so they said you know what guess what we're senators mm-hmm. and we're, ha- we're house reps we can we can do this ourselves and that's what they did still they didn't learn shit Right. Um, I mean, uh, it doesn't seem like it. And, and I always and think they when they're did, doing something like that, what are they trying to distract us from? <laughs> I don't know what was yeah. going on at the time, but, you know, and that was people a that gave, Well, the people that gave testimony in Skiff on the polygraph, none of that's going to be made available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. It's, uh, mm-hmm. but, yeah, it's, it's part of it's, But at least they actually admitted that the freaking things might be real. But they're preparing us, to, as you, like you said at the beginning, if they're preparing us for something, or, I mean, there's a lot of people already prepared. Uh, everybody you know that already knows uh, you, you know, I mean, you go down, I know you go to Florida a lot, to Navarre Beach and all, and you've seen these things. I mean, people already, you know, basically believe it. So they, if they were trying to get to that hurdle, they are way past that and now people just yeah, expect something you know i mean there's some people you know who can't be convinced but it's like hurricanes we all know we should be prepared for it but we're not always prepared for the damn things right um, and and i think it's the same thing with the aliens even even the people who know what's coming 
you want to be prepared, but after you wait X amount of time, you go like, oh, what the hell ever. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you just have enough. And so I noticed one thing with them, though, with, with the contactees that are keepers, or communicators, or people in those areas that are actually doing work for the aliens, they give them uh, a remembrance from time to time mm-hmm. so that they don't, they don't, <clears throat> so they don't lose focus. So they know what they're doing is real. So they'll show them something or let them be part of something that is all extraterrestrial. And you know, so for that individual, they can say, okay, well, there's no doubt what I'm doing is right. And it's all completely real. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing, you know, you can say, oh, well, if it's one individual, that's just a, a loony. When it's a hundred individuals, it's hard to say they're all loonies, especially since the contactees come from so many walks of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, you doctors, firemen, politicians, you know, right boys. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, it people in jail, you know, it, it, people in the hospital, it, they take anybody, anytime. You know, if you're part of whatever the original group of abductees were, uh, you know, how many ever lot years ago that was, um, they're abducting those family lines now. They only mm-hmm. abduct in family. People think they abduct randomly, but they don't. They only abduct mm-hmm. in family lines. It just is so spaced out, probably, you know, that, well, yeah, most it looks random. Just don't, well, most people don't remember. That's what the real problem is. So. Maybe two percent of the people who get taken remember. Maybe three mm-hmm. percent, probably two percent. So you got ninety-eight percent that don't have a clue. They're going through life, even though they have these weird dreams and other things in their lives. They're just writing it off to whatever, and uh, they're not worrying about it. And then mm-hmm. a lot of them will stop being abducted when they get older, anyway, because they're not useful to the aliens. Right. The more useful you are, the longer your contacts last. Mm-hmm. They want humans to deal with humans. It's better for them. They have humans on board their crafts dealing with people who have come out of whatever experiment or whatever you know breeding program they had this person in and seeing right. them in faith. And it's it's more comforting than seeing an ugly gray. What's the future of all this, Joe? How long do we have before you know they yeah, the it's, close encounters of the third kind becomes the real, you know? I mean well, if we don't if we don't blow ourselves up, I would figure we'll have we'll have proof of real extraterrestrials probably within the next 10 to 20 years maybe sooner as far as proof of visitation it's going to take a little bit longer because we have to educate the population so they don't flip out Uh, unfortunately you know a lot of my really hardcore religious friends can't deal with this i was just going to ask you like where where does where does god and faith fit into all this you know i have no doubt that god has no problem with et because he's the one who created the damn things or, yeah, um, but it's it's we the people that have the problem because of the way we were taught growing up. And I have to remind you, I was talking to a good Christian friend of mine the other day. I said, you know, it says in the Bible, many mansions, right? Mm-hmm. In many places. I said, I said, and it's not just that. There's other things in there that mention what seems to be something more than Earth. Yeah, and, uh, I said, but you know, don't get out of bent out of shape about it. And it's it just. It just seems like that, you know, we're going to, they're going to have to pretty soon, it can't go much longer. Uh, but when I say much longer, what's the Gray's time zone? So Gray's live a long time. I mean, probably a million years or more. So what's, what's a long, what's a short time to them? A mm-hmm. thousand years? That's, that's what makes it so hard trying to put a date on. It's hard because there's no evidence to suggest that anything's going to change anytime soon. It's, it's just going to stay status quo. We'd like to thank our amazing guest, and we hope you enjoyed tonight's show. If you have, please give us a like and a share, and please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll be back soon with another great guest. And as always, thanks for listening, and good night.